subscribe button. Guys, we've got a very special live stream for you guys today. You guys know we usually don't live stream on the weekends, but Token Metrics came for the golf tournament, which, by the way, if if I may, uh, I, I did get second place in the golf tournament. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, almost 100 people. My team got second. I'm a stud. What can I say? But listen, guys, you guys will see more about that on our Hit Network video tomorrow. But today, Token Metrics came to join us for a live stream. So we're joined here uh, by Bill Noble, Ian Bellina, and Forrest. I don't know Forrest's last name. I just know him as Forrest. <laughs> These are the guys from Token Metrics. And, uh, you know, I think that this has been a phenomenal weekend. Uh, they were here for our celebration for a million subscribers, which was awesome. But we got a lot of stuff to talk about today. And, I mean, first and foremost, everybody, welcome to the show. Ben, thanks, thanks for having us. us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's start with something. Now, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. Today, I had actually planned to do an altcoin super cycle video where we were going to talk about all kinds of altcoins and everybody's going to be excited about it. But we had something dramatic happen today as the market dumped. Once again, Elon Musk tweeting at the bottom of a dump that he was considering selling all of his Bitcoin. I want to know from each one of you guys, and we'll show the tweet here in just a second, what kind of impact does Elon have on the market? Starting with you, Bill. Okay, Musk is on a campaign to stay relevant, right? No one's talking about Silicon Valley. He tried to buy Bitcoin to make his stock go up so he could be like Michael Saylor. Eh, didn't work. So now he's got to be relevant by smashing Bitcoin. It's not going to work. All right, what, what about you, Ian? Musk is really trying to move the market away from Bitcoin. He loves Dogecoin. And I'm not sure exactly why. Maybe because of the marketing. Maybe he feels like Dogecoin could be a Trojan horse to get crypto mainstream. Yeah. And Dogecoin is... Or, or a Trojan Doge. Trojan Doge. <laughs> but I think he wants to pivot away from Bitcoin into Dogecoin because it feels like regular people, millennials, they all love Doge. On Robinhood, they're, they're trading Doge every single day. Yeah. And maybe he feels like since Doge is a fork of Dash of Bitcoin, that's the way to get people to adopt crypto mainstream. Yeah. What about you, Forrest? Those are good points, Ian. Yeah, I think... Elon is tweeting so much that it's eventually going to lose its charm. He might be able to move the market now in the short term, but eventually he's tweeting so much it's, it's going to lose its impact and his opinion is going to be taken less and less into account. Also in the short term, he's creating buying opportunities Absolutely. for the rest of us. Yeah, I, that's a great point because uh, we've, we've been having some um, uh, articles posted in my research group that I have, and it is all about that. Cointelegraph is saying, look, guys, they are accumulating right now while these dips are happening. And by they, I mean the institutions and the big money and stuff like that. And I think that this is possibly, and that's why I made this video this morning called Last Chance to Buy Bitcoin Under 50K. Of course, you see that and then it drops down to 44K, but that doesn't change the narrative. Like we're running out of time uh, to get Bitcoin under $50,000. This bull run is not over. Let, well, let me just ask the three of you guys, what, just simple one word answer. Is this bull run over? No. No. Nope. Nobody thinks that. And that should be telling you guys something. And I was actually, today I got real bored at my house. Uh, one of my kids was sick this morning, so I couldn't go to church. And I was sitting at the house in a recliner, and I was just looking at all of the top and bottom indicators. Not just the only five we usually look at on uh, Glassnode, but they have 38 there, I think. There is nothing that makes it look like we are at the top of the market. Every time you get the top of a market, you get a sharp spike. We have none of those sharp spikes. In fact, I would say what we've been looking at the last couple of months has been nothing but accumulation, and we're seeing it continue. So I want to show this uh, tweet real quick, uh, show you guys what happened here. So give you guys some background on this. Um, let's actually go, well, I'll show this one first. This is the tweet that dumped the market. It was at about 46,800 when this came in. It had gone below 47,000. And this guy, Mr. Whale or Crypto Whale, he's a large account, 136,000 followers on Twitter. He said, Bitcoiners are going to slap themselves next quarter when they find out Tesla dumped the rest of their Bitcoin holdings. With the amount of hate Elon Musk is getting, I wouldn't blame him. And he said, indeed, indeed. Now, what is that indeed to? Is it that he's getting a lot of hate? Is it that they actually dumped their Bitcoin holdings? Um, and then this tweet right here. Oh, this is from an account I blocked, so I don't know who that is. Uh, but it says, Bitcoiners are going to slap themselves next quarter. Um, it looks like he was just sharing that screenshot. So I, I don't know exactly what this means, but this all stems back to a Peter McCormick thread. 
Um, basically, I know Peter. He's one of the few Maxis that I actually I, I, I do like him as a person. I've met him, had nothing but good interactions with Peter, but he did a long uh, Twitter thread here. Now, this thread is like, God, it was a novel. How many did he write? Look at that. How, who has that much time to write 24 uh, tweets in a thread? Absolutely. This, what about this? He said, from one dick to another, I hope you stop being a dick. <laughs> Peter, Peter, Peter. So anyways, guys, uh, so he made this big, long thread criticizing Elon Musk about Dogecoin uh, and his support of Doge as opposed to Bitcoin. And then that is what fired off um, the, the tweet that was uh, from Mr. Whale that kind of started this whole thing. So uh, I, I don't really know what's happening here, but do you guys think, uh, and anybody can answer this, just open up to anybody who's got an opinion on this. Do you think that Tesla is actually selling their Bitcoin? No. 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 Because they know that someone is down there waiting for it. You know, they, he's probably got people calling him up going, Elon, want to sell? Yeah. Let's just send it on over. Yeah. Seriously. I, yeah, he, he's not selling it. Why did, why did any institution buy Bitcoin in the first place? Inflation. Yeah. What's inflation about to do? What's it doing right now? It's a hedge against inflation. Why would he sell a hedge against inflation when we're about to see inflation? Yeah, absolutely. Good point. I would say partially yes, because they've sold some Bitcoin in the past. They have. Yeah. They basically flipped the entire philosophy very quickly. And now that now with Elon Musk talking about the ecosystem being too power hungry in terms of uh, taking up too much power, I think if they're trying to go eco friendly, whether they're going to Dogecoin or some other new coins out there, whether Cardano, Chia Network, possibly. I think they're trying to find other options to hedge versus inflation that are more eco-friendly because I think that's their brand, yeah. energy. Well, and I, I had told people in the past, be careful of this narrative that these corporations will not sell Bitcoin because they will. Uh, and we've already seen Tesla, they have sold 10% of their Bitcoin, which was $272 million. If you did the math on that, uh, that means 100% of that Bitcoin would have been worth $2.72 billion at the time. And they had bought 1.5 billion, so they still made a billion. Um, that they still had made a, bi a billion that they had not sold, but they did sell 10 percent. So we we just don't know what these corporations will do with Bitcoin, uh, with the the crazy amounts of profits you know that they're looking at. Um, I really wonder if Elon Musk has. I mean, there's got to be some kind of thing at play here that we don't know what it is. Something is going on right now, whether it is just he's just decided to make all-out war against Bitcoin maxis, or whether he's decided to make all-out war. Um, against anyone that criticizes him or the SEC or the traditional markets. We just don't know at this point. But uh, here's here's a question. I'll start with you, Forrest. Is there anything that can be done about this? I mean, we know that Elon Musk is basically kind of trying to mimic, or not mimic, but trying to mock the SEC. This is an unregulated market. If every time the market dumps, he makes a tweet and it pushes it down further, like at what point is there anything you think that can be done about that? I think the thing that we can all do is to buy the dip. Eventually, like I said, it's going to lose its charm. If people just stop listening to Elon Musk and buy Bitcoin instead, buy cryptocurrency instead, and just ignore him, he, it's going to lose its charm. He, he tweets too much. He can only tweet so many times uh, about his disdain for Bitcoin, uh, despite the fact that he owns a bunch of it, uh, before people just stop listening to him. There's a lot of other big celebrity CEOs out there that are going to have different opinions on, on Bitcoin. Yep. Right. Before he, he does a bearish Bitcoin tweet one day and it just stops and goes up. Yeah. Right. That's when you know it's changed and that's when you know like the DeFi re-rating is on too. Yeah. Counter trade Elon. I like it. What about you, Ian? I mean, Elon Musk just wants to be relevant. He wants to, he sees crypto as shiny, sexy, and he wants to join the bandwagon, but he also wants to be in the front, in the lead. Yeah. And by tweeting every single day, I think that's dangerous because eventually he'll, he'll, he'll begin being wrong and people yeah. will pivot and not trust him anymore. So I want to ask now we're going to kind of transition. We've, we've talked about this. Every, everybody knows or, not, or a lot of people know what's going on with the situation. It's really crazy. Somebody said uh, Elon messes everything up. That's definitely seems to be true. There's a lot of people very angry at Elon Musk. It's so amazing how quickly the narrative about somebody can change. Like, we were just talking about when he bought Bitcoin, like, hey, this guy's different. We like this guy. You know, he's buying Bitcoin. Yay. And then now he seems like he may be, you know, among the most toxic of all at this point, uh, especially for people that own Bitcoin. But 
obviously Tokenmetrics is here. We want to, we want to talk about altcoins uh, during this episode because that's what you guys do. That's what you specialize in. And we've seen the altcoins be like pretty resilient against Bitcoin dropping uh, throughout this uh, th throughout this dip. But before before we get into what you guys came, because you guys actually came with some stuff prepared, we wanted to talk about, um, and and we will show you guys how to sign up for Token Metrics if you want to. Uh, before we do that, like let's just transition to altcoins. The altcoin of the hour, other than Cardano, I like Cardano, but uh, that's involved in this Elon Musk thing is Dogecoin, right? We know Dogecoin is a meme coin. It was started as a joke. It's definitely not a joke now to a lot of people. Uh, they're they're banking financial futures on it at this point. Dogecoin is more energy efficient than Bitcoin. It is actually inflationary as opposed to deflationary, which means, hey, if you're going to buy a cup of coffee, it'd make more sense to use Dogecoin than it would to, to use Bitcoin. Of course, nobody wants to sell their Bitcoin. Is there any value at all in Dogecoin? And what do you think the future for the rest of this bull run looks like for Doge? Okay, with Doge, people want new money they don't want the dollar they don't want fang stocks they want something different and they want it now so doge has been elected as the poster boy rebellion against i don't know the fed monetary policy the fact i can't get a job so frequently big bull runs start when the trash in quotes or the stuff no one believes in like oh my god i can't believe that's going up yeah that's how big bull runs start, yeah. right? When the small stuff goes, everyone doubts it, and then the whole market follows. So, you know, Doge guys, Doge community, carry on. I like it. I mean, I think Doge can become a currency through the power of Elon. I think Elon Musk and Tesla, but mainly Elon Musk, loves Dogecoin because it's malleable. It's a cryptocurrency. He can come in and mold to be exactly the way he likes it. Mm. While Bitcoin is entrenched in its, in its own ecosystem, its own fans who will not let him come in and mold Bitcoin. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. I think Doge is a conduit for real sound digital cash solutions. Uh, there's, to name a few, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Nano. I'm a fan of Nano. I've said that in the past. While Tesla's one company that might accept Doge, I don't see Walmart target amazon accepting doge over something that's a little bit more sound with less inflation like bitcoin cash or nano okay but 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 what about let me ask you a question what about pet smart <laughs> that's great <laughs> Sorry. yeah Sorry. Pet smart, I, Petco, that's I, I, a I had to stop your important thought momentum there <laughs> to make a pet dad joke now is it pet smart or pet smart we'll be on that forever go ahead for it's continue no, that's just about it. I just, I don't see, while, while Tesla can use Dogecoin because Elon's some kind of a, a master marketer, right? He's great at staying in the spotlight, going the, the opposite direction you think he's going to go. I don't think Walmart looks at Dogecoin say, and says, you know, we want to get involved in cryptocurrency. We're going to accept Doge. They're going to look at all the other options. And I think those other options are going to be more attractive than Doge. Now, obviously, there might be some stable coins, maybe some CBDCs that they, they end up uh, accepting. But I think options like Bitcoin Cash or Nano, if they want to accept crypto, and there's two ways for institutions to get involved in crypto, right? They can either buy it for their balance sheet, which they, we've seen, or they can accept it. I think we're about to see the point where a lot of these institutions are going to be wanting to accept cryptocurrencies. Yeah. And you, you guys know, we try to actually get away on this channel from saying cryptocurrencies because we like to say crypto assets because it's a possession it's property it's it's not a currency but actually the ones we're talking about here dogecoin nano litecoin bitcoin cash these are actually what we would consider to be cryptocurrencies uh because that's their whole goal right is trying to be a currency so want to point that out well let's uh who, you you want to go first bill we'll sure, cover sure, some, some stuff sure. you had let's see if i can uh get that pulled up here for you want to go over uh some of this stuff here that uh We'll start talking uh, Tesla, electric cars, and the whole nine yards. You got that? There you sure. Go. Okay. So just a brief reminder that if everyone went out in the world and bought a Tesla, you would have to fire up coal power plants to generate the electricity. So, yes, we respect Elon Musk for making green cars, but green is not as green as you might think, and I don't think picking on crypto assets for being not environmentally friendly is smart at all. No. So, yes, we can make noise via Twitter, but at the end of the day, coal power plants are being opened everywhere, and that is not 
because of Bitcoin. Yeah, we've got it. We actually have a big video either tomorrow or Tuesday on the whole environmental aspect of of Bitcoin or maybe non-environmental uh, aspect of Bitcoin. So you talk about Bitcoin. What, what do you see right now with Bitcoin? And, you know, I, I guess when we're going to look at the chart and what you're seeing here right now for this, um, I, I would just wonder, like, how much do these fundamental stories like Elon tweeting, ha how much effect do they have on this? Okay, so Elon and things like these disturbances called tape bombs, right? These things create zigzags or ABC corrections or for the purposes of crypto YouTube, maybe we can just call it panic and puke, right? Mm -hmm. The four hour Bitcoin chart showed that right around 43,000 would have been the bottom of say a range that Bitcoin has been in. So, you know, the puke ends mid-May uh, and then it accelerates back up towards Memorial Day. Yeah. So, TG, you, you know, show the chart there. 43K uh, this morning or this afternoon probably was discount shopping because yes, Bitcoin may not be the best thing in the world, but at the end of the day, it's hard money and there's big people out there who still want to own it. Right. So, you know, ETH is the same thing, right? So on the next slide, you're going to see everyone buying ETH at 4,300, thinking it's going to the moon. And then, oh my God, everybody's selling ETH at 3,400, thinking it's going to zero and neither is the case. And that's how a range forms, right? And what's a range? Well, they wind it up, wind it up, wind it up. And when everyone gives up, it goes, right? And that's what you're getting from ETH. Now, you were asking about the bull market, right? If, if my work is right, you know, you go to the next slide, right? The correction should end between now and the 20th, right? And then DeFi... Okay, all things DeFi is going to go up way more than you can imagine. Let me say that again. Way more than you can imagine between, say, you know, Memorial Day and the end of August. Okay, then, you know, as BitBoy has probably told you, you got to watch out for September and October, you know, or Rectember and Rocktober. <laughs> okay, like um, you know, that's when you're going to have to deal with some real volatility, and it won't be because of Musk tweets. I don't know what's going to cause it, but. You know, you need, to, you need to be prepared for that. But, you know, DeFi re-rating is going to be a bigger story than the correction, right? Yeah. Then the real big rally, in my opinion, is February to May of 2022, where you're going to get shocking, at, uh, shocking upside, not just cryptocurrency, but as you said, crypto assets. Yeah, so th that's interesting, uh, Bill, because I, I would disagree with you here. I would, say, I would say that basically the big rally between May and, May and September – that would be the end of this bull run. So, so you believe in kind of maybe like a super cycle. You think that this is going to go to May of next year. We'll make new all-time highs next year. Right. Actually, not only do I think it's new all-time highs next year, but it's like massive new all-time yeah. highs. In other words, a lot of times what happens just from, the, you know, remembering in equities that September and October can scare you yeah. so much, right? I was talking to a guy yesterday who traded on the floor of a exchange during 87 crash. Wow. Right. So you may have a rectember in Rocktober that, you know, shakes your belief in crypto. Yeah. Looks like the end. Right. And you may be right. It could be the end. But if it's not, then 2022 sets up as, you know, all the guys who are talking about 250K Bitcoin, all the guys who are talking about 10 or 20K Ethereum. Those guys may be right if it's not over in September. OK, gotcha. OK. So it may be a, a little longer, a little extended. We may have some, some fun around the end of the year. Um, and I think it just boils down to, do we follow the traditional Bitcoin cycle? Because if we follow the traditional Bitcoin cycle, then it should end at the, by the end of this year, and we shouldn't have a, a next year. But, you know, we've said on this channel that we always go with history until it breaks. And when it does break, we'll certainly be open to looking at, uh, at different things. Oh, my God, there's two of me on the screen there at the same time. Look at this. Wow, this is amazing. Hey, Ian. Oh, there's Forrest. <laughs> okay. Now, what we want to do right now, as you guys know, um, uh, Token Metrics is a partner of ours. We work with Token Metrics. Uh, we run their, or we don't run their referral program, but we are their number one refer. And, and you know, kind of like I, I told you guys before, you know, part of the reason why my channel blew up so big is because, and there's a Token Metrics uh, code here. You guys can get a seven-day trial for less than five bucks. Is it a 14-day trial now? 
No, one still week, a seven, seven day. days. Still a seven day. I tried to get him to double it for you guys right there. You saw it. Put him on the spot. <laughs> Ian Bellina, he's a man of belief. Okay? He, pressure won't get to this guy. Uh, but, guys, if you want to sign up for Token Metrics right here, uh, you can on bitboycrypto.com slash deals. But what I really want to talk about here is that, for me, you know, my channel grew, obviously, incredibly. We hit a million subscribers. We're, we're almost, we're a quarter of the way to one, or we're over a quarter of the way now um, to 1.1 million um, at this point. So we've already got 25,000 new subs in the last few days. It's been incredible. But one of the reasons why my channel grew so much, honestly, is because of Tokenmetrics. Because at the beginning of 2020, I started working with you guys, and I started making all my monthly picks with the Tokenmetrics research. Uh, on the site and you guys have made like quite a few changes to make it better over time uh, but the thing is is I won almost every month of last year I had four out of five winners um, when it came to my picks of the month there were several ones that you know people absolutely crushed it with solve was one that went up like 200 percent in a month uh, then dash went up I think 200 percent in a month uh, digibyte was another one that absolutely crushed it I think last year in March or or April, and so I just want to say thank you to you guys for, for hooking me up and uh, you know giving my audience access to these deals because I know people are making a lot of money with it. So you guys specialize, um, you guys specialize in altcoin research, and so Bill, this is a portfolio that you created. We want you to kind of talk about this, uh, talk about why you think this is a, a great mixture of a portfolio for people. All right. So at Token Metrics, we've got a couple different ways of generating portfolios. You know, we do. AI sometimes, and we do machine learning, and this is a mix. So I picked five coins, I sent them to our financial engineers, okay, and they use really advanced financial math to come up with an asset allocation. And what do you know? BitBoy Crypto's favorite coin, Cardano, Cardano. Wound, out, wound up with a 25% allocation. And I'm like, well, what a great gift for the man for getting a million subs, <laughs> right? The math is on his side along with the people. Perfect, right? Mm -hmm. And then we've got other coins in there. We've got Alpha, okay, which we've done some deep dive research on. It's a like DeFi coin and Perp, which is like a futures trading coin. So we've got some advanced finance and DeFi math there that we think is really, really undervalued. And then I let my man Forrest talk. Uh, basically, he found Audio and introduced us to Nano you know, audio is, you know, the future of music. You know, we have decentralized finance, and as Forrest will say, it's decentralized content. For audio, it's iTunes and Spotify for the people on the blockchain. And Nano speaks for itself, right? It's, the, it's a part of the future of money. Now, I forgot one thing, Polkadot, right? Everyone's talking about Elon. Everyone's talking about Dogecoin. How about we remember Web3, right? Web 3.0, Polkadot, auctioning parachains, the future of the internet. Gee, everyone seems to have forgotten about that. How silly, right? So wouldn't you know, the computer along with Cardano puts Polkadot at a 25% allocation. And this is one of the things we do with token metrics, you know, AI, machine learning, financial engineering guys in New York, you know, really advanced stuff to help it help us and BitBoy help you make money. Yeah, and the thing is, we, we've got a lot of people in the chat that are angry right now. A lot of people are angry. They said, where's Chainlink? Where is VeChain? Well, here's the thing, guys. We only got six coins right here. You know, like this, this is, and I tell you guys all the time, don't get yourself over leveraged or over diversified when it comes to the coins you're putting in your portfolio. Cardano and Dot are great projects, but I mean, VJ and Link are also really great projects. This is just a sample for portfolio that the machine learning came up with. And I think, you know, it'd be hard to argue against any of these coins. But um, I, I think really what you guys see with this is that two of the biggest coins out there, Cardano and Dot, it wants having over 50 or 50% 50 of your portfolio because you want to lean on those bigger ones. So I'm sure, you know, they could have, that could have been switched out with VeChain or with Chainlink, but VeChain has had a massive pump recently. It's gone down a little bit. I think it's time for Cardano and Dot to cycle in, and we're seeing what Cardano right now uh, having some big pumps. Um, so uh, let's see. This DeFi Disneyland, Alpha Finance, uh, this is a project that we talked about. They had a – did you know about the problem they had with uh, – what was the – Right. With, was it Rari, Cream? Well, no, Rari, as I understood – 
tried to connect to them. Yeah. Right. And then Rari got hacked, but these guys were fine. It wasn't. Yeah. It was. It had nothing to do with right. Alpha. The, at first, they thought it did, but then yeah. they did a little more investigation, found out it wasn't a bug there. It was somewhere else. Right. And, and, and we think this is amazing. I mean, all the supply has been drained off centralized exchanges. Uh, yeah, according to one of our analysts, Binance actually had to go to Alpha to reload their supply. They've got cross-chain DeFi capabilities, so it's not just ETH, gas fees and all. Yeah. They can do Binance coin. They can do leveraged yield farming. Did you ever have a moment in crypto where you said, Gee, I wish I could borrow more so I could buy more or play more. Well, guess what? Alpha is going to help you and institutions do that. You know, the staking paid 9% as of this morning, and the more people use the protocol, the more people get paid for staking. So guess what? Um, people drained Alpha and staked it. Alpha's got a 20%, oh, I believe that might be a typo. Maybe there is a typo. There is a typo. There's, there's a typo. This it's is the weekend. See, I'll tell you how good the golf tournament was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, uh, so you guys can see, actually, it, th there's a typo. These are both supposed to say 10%. They do say 10% in the pie chart. This has 10%. This has 10%. But on the outside is a typo. It, the, the actual pie chart here does add up to 100. Someone said they changed the chart real quickly. No, we just didn't notice it, but thank you for your comments. Um, so anyways, guys, uh, let's move on to so, so Perpetual Protocol. Tell us about that a little bit. This is actually the only one on here I've actually not heard of. Okay, so Perp is a DEX. It's like roughly the eighth largest DEX, yeah. right? They trade on XDAI, so no gas fees. Okay. So if you stake it, okay, they pay their trading fees, part of their trading fees to the stakers. So it's got over 100% yield, okay? And that may only go up because the more people trade, the more they pay the stakers. CoinGecko has it at 258 on the market cap chart. Wow. Okay? Currently, it's incredibly volatile, impossible to own, which of course means you should own it because the best trades are the toughest trades, yeah. right? Um, you know, it's been whipping around between 5 and 16. Charts show, you know, $40 is possible, 63 is possible long term. For example, right now, synthetics, which could go to 100, right now it has a $3 billion market cap. If PERP, this like really unique exchange, if PERP had a $3 billion market cap, it'd be trading at $150. Currently, it trades at, I don't know, what, nine? And everybody can't sell it fast enough because of a Silicon Valley tweet? Please. Well, and synthetics itself is actually uh, probably undervalued, which is what's pretty interesting here. I know you had brought some stuff uh, about synthetics right, right there here. Tell us a little bit about this. Okay. So synthetics is going to be, a part, along with Ave, is going to be the cornerstone of the future of Wall Street Amen. on the blockchain. OK, probably the biggest trade in the history of crypto is coming when DeFi is no longer DeFi. It's just finance on the blockchain. Mm, and there's nothing bigger in finance in Wall Street than derivatives and options. Now, you're like, I don't understand that. Well, you don't have to. Right. You don't have to. If Wall Street comes to the blockchain or Wall Street is done on the blockchain because that's what the market wants, then synthetics could lead the charge. Now, synthetics has been sitting around at 20, boring you to death. Absolutely. I almost, I almost went to sleep thinking about it. <laughs> right. And when they bore you to death or they shake you out with panic and puke, that means the big move's about to start. So I got some GAN work here. I have a trend line, right? That synthetics is so undervalued versus where its trend line is from the GAN work. You know, synthetics really should be at 70. And Absolutely. It's, and it's currently at 20. And again, you know, they're selling it like there's no tomorrow today, which is why I wore my moon jacket, because synthetics should probably be at 100 by the end of the summer. OK, that's how big the future of Wall Street trade could be. Now, you're like, oh, well, you know, everybody on YouTube says it's all going to go up huge. Yeah, people listen. Wall Street comes to the blockchain, synthetics, OK, alpha, perp, all of these coins. I mean, did you see how Ave was moving prior to Elon, uh, you know, doing like the Muppet show on Twitter or whatever he's doing? Right. I, I mean, come on. All right. So, I mean, and if you go to the trend indicator from Token Metrics's website, right, you know, the next slide will show you that, you know, we've got this really nifty system, which was this is a, a new system. There's a new system yeah. you guys have. Right. 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 So this is a combination of, you know, 
I was on these calls, Ian was on these calls, and what I call our financial engineering team, you know, they're like, uh, they would be the equivalent of, you know, Mr. Scott in the engine room of the enterprise. Yeah. So they developed this indicator, and I noticed, conveniently, it ticked bullish for synthetics. Okay, now it's been chopping around, but this dip, to me, feels like discount shopping in DeFi, particularly synthetics. So if the humans like it, if the computers like it, then I leave it up to you. Yeah. Not investment advice. Um, I got to reference this comment here. Someone said, just peed on another Tesla. <laughs> I love it. I've told you, I've trashed on Tesla forever. You, you wouldn't find me driving a Tesla. No offensive. Do y'all have Teslas? Nope. nope. Good. That's what I got to say. I don't, I don't like to drive a bumper car, you know, or, or, or a roller coaster car. I like to drive a real high-dollar gas power machine. Okay, that's what I like to drive. So, yeah, I think this is good. I, it, let me ask you just uh, – uh, well, let me ask Ian because uh, I know we're going to get some stuff for us has a minute too. But, Ian, I want to know from you with everything that Bill said regarding synthetics, do you think that Binance – uh, in FTX launching their own synthetic versions of stocks, do you think that's going to have an effect on synthetics? Because that, that's um, what I, the, I've been a little worried think so. about that. I don't think so. Because I think people want DeFi. People want Ethereum. Ethereum has really built up a huge ecosystem of investors, traders, developers. And I don't think, I don't really see them going to Binance Smart Chain or anything Binance. Yeah. People don't like to be controlled by the man. And CZ is the man. Yes. Yeah, he ah, he but. said it. All right, guys. Next box, <laughs> boxing match, CZ versus Ian. I, I think that'd be a pretty good match. I mean, I don't know. I've seen CZ. I don't know. I don't know if you could take Ian, but could you take him? Maybe. I'll put you in a real tough spot here, Ian. <laughs> Put you in a real tough Maybe spot. Maybe for charity. Yeah, yeah. Don't Maybe bet. for charity. Yeah, Maybe don't, for don't, charity. Don't, don't bet against Ian Bellini. They're gonna it's, be it's calling, never worked out. They're going to call him uh, CZ and Stars is what they're going to call him after him. I'm just kidding, CZ. Come on the channel. Okay, guys. Um, let me ask you this, Ian, because, you know, the last time you were on uh, Around the Blockchain, mm -hmm. you were talking about Ethereum flipping or flipping Bitcoin. And then right after you came on, I mean, that, you know, Ethereum to Bitcoin value just shot up. What's a time frame? What, when do you think that we are going to see Ethereum move past Bitcoin and market cap? Wow. Good question. Conservatively, I would say probably in a few years. Yeah. But if crypto really takes off, if DeFi takes off, DeFi 2.0, as we're saying, yeah. it could be in one year. Yeah. I know it sounds crazy, but Bitcoin dominance right now is at 40%. Mm -hmm. And it, it's going lower. You, we're very bullish on the long tail of crypto here at Token Metrics. Yeah. And we think if crypto is going to go mainstream, the long tail is going to go mainstream. The long tail of crypto will accrue value. And Bitcoin, to me, is really just becoming digital gold. Yeah, Why would absolutely. somebody invest in digital gold as opposed to betting on the future of money and the future of finance and future of technology, which is crypto? Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. You, you know what's uh, I'm sitting here thinking about, which is we talk so much about being early adopters. And I think the writing is on the wall at this point that we are moving closer to no longer being early adopters. I mean, we're always going to be early adopters of people that are sitting here. But I'm talking about for your average person coming in. By the time they come into this space and get educated in crypto, we're already going to be kind of in that upper, you know, the the upper line of that. If you guys have ever seen the early adopter parabola uh, or bell curve, if you will, we're heading towards more mainstream and people aren't going to be as early. But the interesting thing is that when it comes to a lot of these coins, and a lot of these ideas and these DeFi apps and platforms, like, there will still be opportunities to be early adopters in some cryptos, mm -hmm. but just not maybe the overall movement of, of uh, you know, crypto assets in general. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, here at Token Metrics, that's our job. Yeah. Helping people find the next 10x, 100x investments, the next hot altcoins. Yeah. Whether it's Polygon, whether it's Helium, our job is to find these products before anybody else does. Yeah. Crushed, crushed both of those. Uh, I just, you know, TJ, I was just looking. TJ it doesn't have a mic now. But uh, I was looking at our portfolio today. Like, Polygon is, it has moved up to, like, one of our biggest holdings just because it yeah. spiked up so hard which has been amazing. So that was definitely a pick that we have been looking at token metrics and seeing its ratings and things like that. Uh, and, you know, obviously there's been a lot of great picks you yeah. guys have had. Me too. I mean, right now, Polygon is actually my biggest holding. It, Whoa. Flipped, it, it flipped Ethereum, right? But it's just to show you how early we were in Polygon, we discovered them in India. We traveled to India back yep. in 2018, in August. They won a pitch, competition, a pitch contest. And we said, you know what? This project is the next big thing. Wow. That's how early we like to find projects at token metrics. Wow, that's amazing. I know. it's uh, And then 
I know that I was talking to Sam, a guy that works with you, your, your your CEO. Sam's a good guy. I like yeah, Sam. Shout guy. out to Sam. Yeah. <laughs> Sam can play golf. Way to go, Sam. <laughs> yeah. And he actually, he talked to my kid about playing baseball forever. It was really good. It was really good. My, my, my oldest son had a lot of good uh, uh, conversation with him. But uh, the thing is, is that Sam was mentioning he actually brought helium to you guys like long time ago. He said that was like one of the well. first projects he brought to you. Yeah, 2018. That was the first project he helped bring to me. We flew from China all the way to San Francisco to the offices. And we saw the actual hotspots being built there. Yeah. And we said, you know what? They're building an internet on the blockchain. Yeah. And the team's backing them. And seeing the engineers there in the office building the hardware was amazing. And ever since then, that project was on our radar. Yeah. It's just not all hot air. Yeah. <laughs> not hot ah, air. <laughs> Ian, he got it. He got it. He got it. All right. Well, Forrest, let's, let's go over uh, what, what you brought. Because, you know, obviously we're going through – a gigantic correction right now. Um, and, and the interesting thing is, is still the size of this correction we're in is not even as big as the average correction in 2017. We haven't had a massive correction, like over 30% um, or anything like that in this, uh, in this bull run so far. But now I think with it dropping down to 44, I think it is getting pretty close uh, to that level. So I know you brought these slides here talking about the anatomy of a correction, so do you want to kind of kind of start going over this and uh, tell everybody what's going on with the, the price dipping here? Yeah, absolutely. And I want to do a, give a brief side note on Alpha and Perp. And for those of you who for those of you who might not know, I'm the senior cryptocurrency investment analyst at Token Metrics. So not only do we do AI, machine learning, quant, technical analysis, we also do fundamental analysis and investment research. And one of the reasons why we like Alpha Perp so much, and some of these other coins we just talked about. This is something that Ian taught me very early on when I started working at Token Metrics. The, the tokenomics of where they pay out the stakers of the token with fees generated by the protocol, that's called being cash flow positive. So if you're looking at the tokenomics of a cryptocurrency, that's just a little in investment research tip for you. That's something that we pay a lot of attention to. And I just wanted to share that with you guys on Alpha and Perp and other cryptocurrencies that follow that tokenomics model. All right, so jumping into Bitcoin, this is a slide of Bitcoin in 2017. Look how many corrections we've had over 30%. Yeah. 34, 34, 33, 39, 40, 30. What was the best time to buy Bitcoin in this bull market? When it's corrected over 30%. 40% correction, that's, that's pretty scary. But look what it did after that 40% correction. This is a logarithmic scale, right? So it looks like it, the, the bull market was halfway over. It dipped down to three thousand, three and a half thousand dollars and then went to 19 and a half thousand, 19.7K over the course of like 91 days after a 40% correction, after there was blood in the streets, everyone panic sold, 40% correction. It rallies to 19.7K. Right. If we hop we're going to blast through these slides rather quickly because that's the main point. It wasn't until we saw a 43% dip uh, that we actually saw the bull market end, and that uh, catalyzed actually a 70% correction. Now, let me, let me ask yep. you real quick, Forrest, uh, because this is something that, you know, there's a lot of these TA guys out there. Carl, Chris from MM Crypto. I, I like both these guys. I love them. I have them on my channel all the time. Good friends, okay? But a lot of times they will say things like, uh, well, you know, sometimes it's healthy to get a 50% correction. Well, from what I'm seeing in the last bull run, now we do know in 2013, 2014, there was a 50% correction uh, in the middle, but people consider that actually to be a mini bear market. Like, if we drop below 40%, like, is that a sign that we're actually not in a bull market anymore? Is that kind of the way that you would look at it? Or are the numbers, you know, more arbitrary than that? I think they're a little bit arbitrary. I think there's there's some flexibility there. It depends. I mean, if we're we're if we're getting pressed down by a lot of FUD, if we're if we're Good dropping point. below forty percent of a correction because Elon Musk is just pounding the table on on eco friendliness of Bitcoin, then you know maybe we see a fifty percent correction and it's still smart to buy the dip. Interesting. But if it's just you know you know because Bitcoin has rallied to two hundred and fifty three hundred k and then we see a forty three percent correction. Okay, maybe maybe the the bear market's here. We need to be smart about you know getting our money out. Yeah, I mean, and that's it. And this is what I've been trying to explain to people, is that when we do get that large correction, that's not a correction, right? That's actual bear market. Like 
if if we end up and my my guess is three hundred and twenty two thousand dollars, like if it drops all the way down to a hundred and sixty thousand dollars, there's a lot of people that bought between that one sixty and three twenty. They're going to yep. get crushed. And I think that's what kills uh, kills the momentum. So, well, th- thank you for those thoughts on that. Um, I guess this is uh, the next slide here, talking mm-hmm. about two thousand and twelve to now. Yeah, this is just a logarithmic chart of Bitcoin's progress over time, and you'll notice that it's over the long period going up into the right. But what you'll notice about the peaks of the last two market cycles is they're very sharp. Absolutely. They're yes. very sharp. And if you look at where we're up, where we're at right now in the top right, and I believe the next slide actually zooms in on that. Accumulation. Yep. Accumulation. That does not look like a historic no. Bitcoin top. Usually when Bitcoin tops out, it goes up sharply and it doesn't retest. Now, on the previous slide, I had all those green lines that just shows you every time Bitcoin tests and retests the same point over and over and over again, it eventually breaks through it. Now, obviously, history repeats itself until it doesn't. But this is what we have to go on. And it's it's absolutely an indicator that this is not the end of the bull market. And I think like it is very important to point out that when you hear me say things like uh, we know none of the data points to this being the end of the bull market. This is the type of stuff that we're talking about. Like this is the exact type of thing that we're talking about. The, the shape of the chart is different. And you know what's interesting is if you go to Glassnode, maybe we'll do some of this on the live stream tomorrow. If you go to Glassnode and look at the top and bottom indicators, you will see that all all of the movement on those indicators, which is a you know vast array of indicators that mean different things and point to different uh, outcomes, but all of them right now look similar to when we were in accumulation stages in past bull markets. Because just like we talk about the uh, the jagged top of this uh, of this market, or of all the market tops, the indicators they all show giant spikes too at the tops of markets. None of them are in giant spikes right now. None of the retail FOMO is, is happening like you see in the in the manic stage. We we haven't seen the altcoin cycle yet to where everything goes up like Dogecoin. That's how I try to explain it to somebody. I said, you know. The, the top of the market is when everything is going up like we saw Dogecoin go up. So, yep. next slide here. Yep, so this big fat green trend line here is just showing that all the space underneath it was a negative externality. It was the pandemic, right? That mm-hmm. big drop dropped us below the trend line. We yep. should have been on this entire time. So Absolutely. you might wonder why the Pi Cycle top indicator did go off. It's just because we caught up too quickly, right? And right now, we actually haven't even come back down to test this trend line, right? We're at 45K, 44K today, right? A test on this trend line would, I think, be 39, 40. I'd be surprised if we even do touch it. Uh, and if we do, I think we'd get a strong bounce. This is a very strong historic trend line. And if we jump into the the next slide, you can just see we're we're testing the 20 week moving average right now, and we're currently at a 32 and a half percent correction. When has historically in bull markets been the best buying opportunities? 30 to 40 percent corrections. We're right in the middle of a 33 percent correction. And not to get too technical on you guys, 33 percent cor- corrections are very very common in cryptocurrency because that's the point at which when when crypto drops or bitcoin drops 33 percent that's the point at which you can no longer short it at on 3x margin and have your liquidation point above the all-time high just a, a fun fact for you so that's why a lot of times the short pressure runs out when you drop below a 33 well, percent that is good info right there that's why forest that's, that's why he's in charge forest right in the house yeah seriously run forest run Okay. I'm sure no one's ever said that to you in your life. Okay. And last slide here, this is just showing, and I know it's a little bit zoomed out, but uh, if we actually did come back down and test this big trend line, we'd have a 40% correction. Love it. That's, that's such good analysis there because that's what I keep saying is I feel like sometimes like, and once again, this is no shade to any of the TA guys out there. I, I love those guys and they're really good in the short term, especially, but I, I feel like sometimes like they, they get a little too into the charts and they don't look at the fundamental perspective of like, if we go more than 40% down, we are in trouble. Like there is a line where you're like, okay, we're actually in trouble now. That's why right now we're all comfortable. We're all talking about everything is still on the upswing, excited about everything. But if it drops below that trend line and there's not some kind of, you know, Elon tweeting or another pandemic or, you know, uh, a, a new sickness that comes out, whatever it is that will cause it to drop or, you know, something crazy politically. 
if it just goes below 40% or above 40%, I mean, and then it drops below the trend line, like we would actually be in trouble. And, and I think that, you know, Ian and I were talking about this the other night. Like, I think a, a big mistake that was made in 2018 by a lot of people was that the market was over and they didn't know that it was over. And I think that was something that we had talked about. You definitely experienced. Yeah. I mean, uh, last bull run, boom, bust cycle with ICOs, token sales, cryptocurrency in general. Uh, mainstream people or <clears throat> retail investors and traders began losing money while those who were insiders were still making money. Yeah. And they were basically out of touch. Yeah. Right? They were out of touch from what everybody else was doing in terms of losing money in crypto. Uh, and after a while, the market had to kind of fully correct. Yeah. And for me, going through that myself, right? For us, we, we were still making money in 2018, but in a way, we kind of lost touch with what the people who just bought the top yeah. were experiencing. And now, as we enter this new bull run, I think people have to really keep tabs on what's happening with retail investors and traders. Yeah. So when you see people like Elon Musk pumping Dogecoin, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, are we going through the same thing in 2017? So I think it's, it's definitely very, very deadly what he's doing. And those people who are, who are brand new to crypto have to really be careful. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I think that what's really interesting is, um, you know, going back to your earlier point, uh, is that like I experienced that as the retail investor in 2018. I lost all the money I made in the bull market. And so, you know, I, I at that point, that was actually just when I had started getting into content creation and stuff here. Um, but I was on that end of it. So I experienced it and I lost all the money. You were on the other end of it where you, you were, you know, you had your ICO thing going and, and, and you weren't able to quickly like determine like, hey, everybody's losing money right now. But I think the cool thing is both of those experiences for us have driven us to make sure that the people that use token metrics, the people that watch my channel, that they don't go through that again. Cause we went through that and we learned from that. And I'm sure a lot of your focus is not having to go through that again, not allowing people yeah. to go through that. And that's a big focus for me. I don't want people to go through what I went through. Yeah, absolutely. That's why we both took a metrics because yeah. now we can give people cutting edge research with our team, Bill, Forrest, ourselves using, taking tools of the trade, tools that are typically used by insiders, by quant funds, by hedge funds, yeah. and making them available to retail investors and traders. Yeah. I mean, and I'll tell you, we, uh, we did the golf tournament with you guys yesterday. <clears throat> we all went out to dinner on uh, Thursday night. Uh, and then you came up here to the studio on Friday. And I tell you, this Token Metrics team is awesome. Like, we love all the people that work for Token Metrics. I mean, how many people did you bring? Was it like 19? 15? 15 or so. Fif like 15 people. A couple people. Ubers. A couple, <laughs> couple Ubers. Uber <laughs> so some of these, like we were talking about Sam, and there's several other people that uh, Zach is here. Um, a lot of people that I met and I talked to really connected with, and you guys have got a great, you know, family team environment, the same way that we do here. Uh, a lot of people say they watch our hidden network videos. I saw a comment this weekend. They're like, if these guys really just are turned on for the camera and this is all like authentic, like these are really excited people to be in crypto and that that's hundred percent true. And that's definitely the feeling that I got from your team too, that you guys are, are super invested in this for the long term and really care deeply about making sure that people that get your service, like get value out of it. Yeah, absolutely. Crypto family. Crypto like family. Yeah, that's it. Uh, so, guys, what what else do we really want to cover here? We've been on it for about uh, 50 minutes here. Uh, is there anything specific that, you know, any other coins you guys want to talk about? Well, I mean, Forrest could tell you about audio. Yeah, oh, I can yeah. I can jump in on audio. Audio let me Let me let me hear you, Forrest. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah. now, I do want, before you get into this, I do want to say, you actually gave us audio as an NFT pick on a token metrics round table about three months ago, maybe. Yep. And it crushed it after that. So I've definitely been paying attention to this one. So go ahead. Yeah. It ran all the way up to $5 and I think it's on a steep discount right now for under $2. I think it's a personally, I, I personally think it's a, a great pickup right now. Nobody's talking about theta or audio or NFTs right now. You remember when theta got into the top 10 yeah. cryptocurrencies? I do. No one could shut up about it. Yeah. It was it was the end all be all. Everyone was talking about theta, and now it's been it's been a month and a half, and nobody cares about theta. And theta is not a forty plus percent discount from its all time high. Yeah, audio is the theta trade that people that missed out on theta can get into because theta is decentralized video streaming. Audio is decentralized audio streaming. Right. Yeah. Right. So when when iTunes first rolled out, Apple was worth eight billion. Spotify, before the venture capitalists and the whole thing became publicly traded, they were worth $8 billion. Safe to say, audio's market cap is a lot lower than $8 billion. Yeah. 
right. Usually. So if it, if Wall Street, music, content gets decentralized, uh, that's why you stick with token metrics and BitBoy Crypto because if you think you missed it, you haven't. It's only started. Yeah, and I definitely think audio is uh, is the future. We know streaming is the future. Uh, obviously, that's why we do so many live streams on this channel. That's why we move to two live streams a day. Because, guys, in, in five or ten years from now, you guys are going to find that almost all content is streaming. Because it's a way for audience to interact with people. It's no longer like you're watching ESPN and the people are just like, you know, uh, characters in boxes, you know, like you're actually able to communicate, send messages. If there's something you want somebody to go into, you can do send a super chat, I'm not asking for super chats right now. I'm just saying in general, it's a good way to get people's attention. Uh, and you know what it is? We've definitely seen that for our channel, being able to show that like, Hey, I can come on and talk crypto with the best of them at all times. It's not just about, you know, I'm going to make a scripted video and write out my thoughts and use a research team. And it just gives you a, a better feel for who you're actually talking to and who you're dealing with. I think that's uh, certainly important. And we, t uh, man, I wish TJ had his mic. I'd, I never thought that's a word I would say. <laughs> wow. Uh, well, TJ and I have been talking a, a lot about, like, we've been having problems in the morning sometimes on our live stream because OBS has just taken up so much power and YouTube isn't able to, you know, process all of it. And that's what Theta is all about. So we do know that these are going to be bigger problems. Uh, it, it's uh, things keep moving. And when you look at audio, what, what, what do you think for us in terms of like Clubhouse or Twitter spaces? Or do you think we're going to see more of that kind of uh, streaming for audio where it's like group conversations? Uh, I'm not sure about group conversations, but I do know they're looking to go into podcasting as well, which is a big spot. But it would be interesting to see if they implemented those features. Um, I know we have a pretty robust scoring system for fundamental analysis and code reviews. And this was a project that I think it was the first project, Ian, that scored above a 90 on both fundamentals and code review, uh, which is a pretty big yeah. deal for projects that we look at. Yeah, Absolutely. Well, guys, I, I think uh, that's probably all we got for today. And you guys don't forget, head on over to uh, bitboycrypto.com slash deals. You guys can sign up for token metrics right there. It is all you got to do. It just says click link below. And look, there's the link below. All you got to do is click it. Uh, you can sign up for a seven day trial for less than five bucks. Can you, real quick, Ian, can you just tell me exactly what they get with the trial? Yeah. So you have full access to token metrics for one week. For each plan so we have hodl plan investor plan and pro plan pro plan is the most is the highest plan you have access to bill for ourselves we have a weekly webinar where we do deep dives on crypto for two hours yeah via via zoom then we also have over six thousand assets we have cryptocurrency visual trends indicator using ai to tell you when to buy and sell we also have portfolio uh portfolios built on indices and we also have ratings based on cryptocurrencies based on ai yeah. so for for anybody out there who wants to know what to do in crypto, whether you're brand new in crypto or you've been in crypto for over five years, our team goes out there and gets all that same research into one platform. Yeah. And I think most people watching this would have $5 for the trial. Why, why do you do a $5 trial instead of a free trial? To make sure people are serious about their journey in crypto. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think if you don't have five bucks to commit, then, you know, and I think if it was free, just everybody will go sign up and then not actually we use it. We tried free for one year or so. Yeah. And we discovered having a pay try work better. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's awesome. Well, guys, it's been a blast having you guys out here. Real excited to have you uh, out here. Look forward to you guys maybe coming again. I, I'm going to Austin, I think, next Monday night where you guys are located. Uh, I don't know if I have time. I think I'm only there for 18 hours. I'm going to speak to the Texas State Legislature. How about that? Oh, wow. So, yeah, pretty cool. I think it's going to happen. We're like 99%. I don't think the flight's booked yet, but we are. We are probably doing that. It's so really exciting. So I'm going to go to your neck of the woods in Texas. Uh, but, guys, like I said, thank you so much for coming on. You guys, if you want to sign up, make sure to head on over to bitboycrypto.com slash deals. And you guys make sure to drop some comments down below and let us know what you think about token metrics. Anything you guys want to say on the way out? Well, I just want to thank you for, for being here. You know, it was really special to be here to see you hit one million, right? It's uh, And this has been planned for months. Right, it was right, like so, right, so, right. So lucky that you guys came, or so, like random. You know, you so, came. you know, the, the serendipity of being here is something yeah. I'm grateful for. Absolutely awesome. Yeah, I mean, thank you, BitBoy. You've been with us since day one. Yeah. Early, early fan of Token Metrics. We're also fans of you. We love you. I uh, love watching Hit, Net, Hit Network. Love the content you're creating. And you're basically a man for the people. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. People's champ. Love it. 
Yeah, echo exactly what Bill and Ian said. Thanks for having us. We genuinely appreciate it. And it's been really cool to hang out with you and your team behind the scenes and just, you know, get to get to expand our crypto family, get to know everybody. It's been awesome. Just a team of great people. Yeah, thank you so much for that. That means a lot to me. And uh, thank you guys for coming out. Thanks for coming on. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. That's all I got. Be blessed. Good boy out. <laughs>